Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco, and this one should be fun today. So I don't know what it is about me and, and flea market feels, but every now and then I find one I just can't say no to for a couple of dollars. Maybe I'm always looking for candidates to, uh, to put on this channel, and maybe sometimes it just kind of brings back a memory or something, and I think that's the case today. The uh, reel that I have here is a Garcia Kingfisher. It uh, probably, it's made in France. It was probably the 1970s. I'm thinking there was a time when you had the Mitchell Garcia and then Mitchell went bankrupt and then Garcia continued to make some of the reels under its brand uh, before the Mitchell thing resurrected. So I'm thinking late 70s is what this one is. And it's uh, quite an example of a nicely made reel for the time. You got metal bodies and, uh, and uh, reel seat. It's a plastic top. It doesn't have anything fancy for a line roller. It simply has the bail that has the bent angle that's going to capture the line. And it works. All these years later it works. It's a fresh water reel. It's probably about a 2,000 size. Possibly a 3,000 size by today. It's called the K35, so I guess that's going for a, um, uh, a 3,000 size. And uh, the, even the anti-reverse is working. So I thought it would be a great example of a reel that we can uh, take apart, show you how to tune it up and keep it running. It's a survivor. And uh, it reminds me of a reel that I had in the early 60s, maybe the late 50s, almost an identical setup. Mine was probably a no-name uh, knockoff reel, but boy, that gave me a lot of fishing out of that one. So you don't need to be complicated in this, uh, this bell system, and you don't necessarily need to dismiss the reel as not being a good reel because it doesn't have a fancy line roller or ball bearings or anything like that. The reel does show that it is a uh, steel handle. We have rust on the handle. The rest of the components have held up nicely. There is some... Uh, some scraping on the decals there, and that's to be expected, but you can still read the Garcia and the Kingfisher on it, so it hasn't been terribly abused. And uh, we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how it's made, how to service one of these if you have it, and tell you that it's a bargain if you can pick one up at a flea market for a couple of dollars like I did. So I like to get started by removing the exterior pieces and parts. And as I do that, I also like to stop for a moment and thank the folks that are on the front lines of this pandemic our local hometown heroes, the folks that are involved in uh, either the medical sides of it with the fire, rescue, EMTs, uh, hospital staff, anybody in the medical field, whether it's your GP or otherwise, and uh, all of the folks that are doing the other things to keep us going, uh, the supply chains and the like, and uh, really do appreciate your untiring efforts here to uh, keep us safe and out of harm's way and to restore the health of those that have, have the, had the virus. So thank you for all you do. So I'm just kind of cleaning up here. I used a little bit of a pen mod and reel cleaner because there was some surface dirt and the like on the spool and that's cleaned it up very nicely. And uh, I'll just uh, set that aside. This spool has the uh, drag washer system. It's probably a plastic drag washer molded into it so you can't get this out there's no uh, clip rings or anything they won't come out so just uh, they're never intended to be used much anyway but that's typical of a low-end reel you'll find uh, just a press down probably a, a, a polyurethane washer inside there a teflon washer and uh, simple uh, in design made in france on the back we can see that and we can also see made in france or at least france on the uh, the real seat there. So it's a uh, French made reel. When I look at the top of this, if I bring that axle shaft up, I'll notice that there is no uh, rotor uh, nut underneath here. That means typically that I have a little horseshoe clip under here holding the rotor in place and uh, we'll get to that next. So I like to do two things. I like to remove the handle. This is a screw handle. As I mentioned, there's a lot of rust on there, so whatever the plating was at one point has, uh, has kind of disappeared. I also like to take the anti-reverse and move it to the off position so that when I remove the main gear, uh, I'm not going to push out anything that has to do with that. There's only a single screw here. Let's see if this one... Yep, okay. 
I was wondering if the screw was uh, not uh, capable of being used with that screwdriver, but it worked out fine. And here's some old grease. So typically, that's about what you'll find in a uh, in a reel like this. You're just going to have a lot of old grease in there, and uh, we'll just have to separate that to find out how this is held on. I'm thinking it's probably held on with some C clips. And uh, I'm just going to remove this to, to get there. I'm just using a pick. Clean out that old grease. So, this is an interesting one. They've even saved a little bit of that. You take the star and the, uh, uh, the, the shim washer there. Now we're going to remove the horseshoe clip here. Let's find something unusual in a lot of these reels. Some of them are cost and some of them are engineering. Now we can remove the rotor and then we have a solid axle shaft here where this is just pressed onto it. So there you go. I just learned another thing. I'm taking all of my pieces and I'm putting them into my parts tray. It's off camera. My parts tray is nothing more than a little bucket here, but it does keep track of all the pieces and parts that I take off. I never uh, never spend much time looking at these reels to kind of see what's going on. This one is an interesting one. The plastic crosswind block is just kind of molded on there. That's good. All right. Always learn something. So we can just clean out the old grease. That's all that's going to be needed on most reels that you service. When we say come on in for an annual servicing, what we really mean is just take care of it, clean it up. Go ahead and uh, do your best in terms of degreasing it, getting it to. Uh, Get rid of the dirt and crime and debris, and then come on back in with a uh, new set of lubrication, and it's ready to go again. We should be able to push the main gear through. Here is your uh, dog. We took that off. Again, we didn't have much of a view into what it is, but it's simply a straight spring that's bowed here that controls that anti-reverse uh, dog. I'm going to leave that intact. There's no, no reason to take that off. We'll do a little bit of cleaning on the old grease that's in the case here. Not much. No, we're not going to leave it intact. We just pushed it off and moved the, uh, the dog a little bit. And let's take that off, clean the whatever it is back there. So take pictures along the way. This is a good point to tell you that because I'm taking pictures here and if I had had any uh, wonder, wonderment about the uh, position of that dog, I can go rewind my video here. You don't need to rewind the video or you don't need to do a video. But what you can do is you can take certain uh, positions along the way in terms of the, uh, the look of the, the reel. And that'll tell you a little bit more about uh, where to put them back if something like this happens or if you just get lost in your reassembly. So I'm just taking a moment to knock what rust I can off of that uh, metal piece there. Again, the, the coating has come off. You can't restore the coating. And why would you try on a reel of uh, limited value like this? All right. So we did notice that it sits on the stud just like that and we had a flat spring and the flat spring's got a bow in it and one side sits in the lip and the other side sits in the groove in the case. Let's just go reinstall that. I may need a small tires for that. My, typically my big hands don't work very well with that. So we've reinstalled that spring. We got lucky. And we do want to make sure that that's in the off position, which it is. 
So we can uh, take our main gear. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to clean that up. Get that all grease off. It's hard to even speculate how old that grease is. It's probably been a while since this one's got a lot of uh, dirt and debris on it. It's probably been sitting in a closet or somewhere. Somebody just decided uh, they're never going to take this one fishing again. It's a shame because it's a nice little reel. Like I said, I had one of these. I don't know who made it uh, when I was young. And uh, boy, it lasted forever. Nobody needed to tell me that I needed 12 ball bearings and uh, all kinds of fancy stuff. This one uh, just knocked it out of the park. Put a lot of fish on it and uh, never seemed to notice that uh, there were no ball bearings or anything else going on with that reel. Simply knew that it caught a lot of fish. All right, so we've just uh, greased the shaft. We've greased the front. We're going to reinstall that. We're going to put a little bit of grease into the thread of the cross wind block there, that little recess. Make sure that we get some on the shaft on both sides and a little bit behind in the, in the carrier. And then we're just going to reverse the process that we had to take it apart. It's going to go this way. You're going to find the stud on your, your main gear. I'm going to clean that inside out a little bit. I'm just going to use a little bit of penetrating oil just to get that some light dirt and the like in there. And the Q-tip will serve fine. Okay, we'll just use a paper towel to mop up. And then you can recall that we take the, the rotor, which has got a lot of the grease will get off of that. We'll put some fresh grease on there. Bring the rotor over the top. You need to make sure that you mesh the pinion gear with the main gear before you try putting the clip in. And you can press the clip in. And if you're curious, you can spin the rotor just to make sure everything's working fine. You can also put your anti-reverse on, make sure that it's operating. It is. And then you can just close up the bottom of this reel. There's two studs on there, a little bit of dirt. Let's get the dirt off. That's it. This is a good time while I'm cleaning this up to tell you if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe. And if you uh, subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll get a chance to see the reels that I'm working on. They're certainly not all low end like this, but uh, every one of them has a little story to tell like this one does. And I try to do my best to tell those stories. And then uh, if you um, want to see more, by all means, please uh, do that subscription. If you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, uh, then please leave, a, uh, leave it in the uh, comment section. I'll be happy to reply to those. I generally reply to those faster than folks trying to reach me by phone or, or the like. If you uh, are interested in having a reel repaired, well, contact me by email on the business card that follows. I'll be happy to provide you with that information. Okay, so we've put the clicker back on, that little shim, and there's a little washer that goes on top. We can reload the spool now by winding that up. Get a little bit of dust and dirt on the top of the, the button here. And then we'll give it a test spin, see how it does. So these reels are simple, but it doesn't mean that they're not, uh, not capable of landing big fish. And uh, in this case, as I mentioned, this would be for a fresh water. Uh, probably made in the 70s. And uh, just a fun little design, well made, and ready to go fishing again. Wow. Okay, and then this little bale, as we mentioned, there's a little flip lever that comes in here and gets tripped on the inside of the ramp. 
you'll set it like this and then it will click over and trip that bell. So there you go. The Garcia Kingfisher, it's the K35 model, <laughs> available at your local flea market for a couple of dollars. Ready to go fishing again and I'm sure that uh, if I find the right uh, person out there, they're going to have a, a lot of fun just like I did fishing with a real similar to this. So I hope uh, that you all stay well, stay watching. Again, a special thank you to our first responders. And uh, please have a, have a great day. Stay fishing and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.